All right, I hope you had a good weekend and uh, had a good first week of classes. Uh, thank you guys for working so hard that first week, and I know it's kind of an adjustment um, doing everything online, but uh, hopefully it's working out for you, the videos. and. Um, a couple big announcements is I got more markers. Uh, I was able to leave self-quarantine, so I'm excited about about that. And also, um, I wanted to put out uh, the schedule for next week, for this week, and uh, kind of give you a rundown of, of how the classes will go for the week. Um, hopefully, by now you're seeing, make sure you're turning your assignments in on time, so that way I can mark you present for that day and give you the full points. Um, for the assignment. Uh, as far as today's video, um, after, the, after I go through this week, I'll have a, another little thing that we're going to be doing for the geometry part, and you will do it just like normal. You'll watch the video, and you'll upload the photo of, of the notes, because basically today I'm just going to have you take some more notes, and that way you will get your points for that assignment, and I can take attendance for that day. Tomorrow's going to be a little bit different uh, as far as just that there's not gonna be a video. So that's the only difference. There'll be a photo of your study guide. So instead of having a whole video just because there's not any new material, you're just gonna click on the photo of the study guide, do the problems, and upload your photo for that assignment. So the only difference is it's not gonna be a, vi a video to watch. It's just gonna be a photo of your problems, and you're gonna do the study guide. Those that have had me know that I like to do a study guide before a test coming up. So. That way it gives you an overview of the whole thing that we've covered so far, the pre-algebra review and the beginning of shapes here. On Wednesday, there will be a video of the answers of the study guide. I went ahead and decided to make a video of that because that way if you missed any problems, you can see why you missed them and I'll do them as a video. There will not be an assignment on the classwork though for that day, but I still need to take attendance. So you just need to make a comment on that you watch that video. So on the stream, after you watch the video, just make a comment. Hey, I watched this, or hey, I'm present, and that way I can do your attendance. And make sure you do that on Wednesday so that I can count you here for Wednesday. Uh, and then Thursday will be the test, and I'll announce later how that will be coming about. So just give you a quick rundown of that. And so today's just watch the video, do the notes, take a photo just like normal. Tomorrow, no video, but you'll take a photo of your work. Wednesday, just make a comment, and Thursday will be the test, all right? Uh, let me go ahead and start with the problems that we, I had you do on Thursday with those beginnings of the shapes. Okay, so let me go through those so that you see the answers. You can check your work. And then I've just got a few more things to uh, put as for your notes on the, um, uh, for today, okay? And I'm gonna have you take a photo of those notes. But basically, I had you name uh, this shape here. Okay, it was a dot, and then it had another point, and it's x, y. So that right there is a line segment, and it's x, y with the little line above it with no arrows. You could have also had y, x. Okay, so because a line segment, it does not matter which order you go in. You can go either way. So because a line segment is that measurement there, no matter if you say x, y, or y, x, you're talking about the same segment. Okay, the same length there. Uh, then I had a VX, and beyond that had the arrows. Okay, so that is line VX. So the only difference between line and line segment is the two arrows. You could have also had it as XV. That's also acceptable. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, the GT was a ray. And that is the only one that it does matter what order you go in. You have to start at the beginning and then go towards the arrow point, And then it goes to the right. So it's GT, just like it looks. And, but except for this one, okay, that goes up this way. You got ME. Okay, that is the order you have to say it. ME. It cannot be EM. Okay, it has to be ME. It has to be about me. No, just kidding. Uh, you just have to have it as ME. And then you point your arrow still to the right, okay? Because a ray, you always have the arrow pointing to the right, and you go from the beginning point towards the arrow. So it's ME, okay? And then naming the angles in four ways. So that first angle had uh, had a P, 
P here, R, S, and 7. So you could call this angle P by its vertex. You could call it angle 7 by the number. You could call it angle RPS, okay, RPS, or you could have called it angle SPR, okay, or Springfield. Uh, then you've got, uh, let's see, this was a Q, and an L, and a T, and a 1, okay. So you could have called it angle Q, angle 1, angle LQT, or angle TQL, L, LQT or TQL, okay? So that was, your, uh, that was your four names for that. Now we're still talking about this same angle though, and you're going to start seeing me use this little thing right here to talk about the degree of that angle. This one looks to be about an 85 degree angle, okay? And so that's talking about this angle here, this 85. This one looks to be about 120 degrees. And so that's talking about this angle. All four of these names are referring to the same angle, okay? All right, so those, uh, check your answers on those from Thursday. And then let me go over some of the, uh, just a couple of last things on, on the beginning of angles. We're gonna get deeper in angles on the next unit, but I wanted to just put a couple more things in there for your notes. And one of them is, what happens when there's more than one angle at a vertex? Okay. So what happens when that happens? Okay. Or uh, I guess that'd be the way. So what happens when that happens? But basically, I've got one, two angles. And because they're stuck together like this, they make a third angle. And it's harder to see that one because you think, well, I only see two angles. But if you were to take this out here and combine these two, you actually have three angle measures there and three different angles. So first off, let's talk about the names where we just left off. I can no longer call this angle angle A by its vertex because I don't know which angle I'm referring to. If I was to just say angle A, well, I don't know if I'm talking about this one, this one, or both of them combined. So I can't just use angle A anymore. So that name is not a choice anymore if there's more than one angle at that vertex. Remember, the vertex is the point where the rays begin. Um, I can't refer um, as far as if I wanted to refer to, and let me just highlight it basically, this angle here, this big angle, that's both of them combined. I can't refer to that as some hybrid number of like one, two or 12, or you know, like put those together. They are separate angles, one and two, and so I can't just combine them or add them up to be three, because we can later add an angle three there. So I can't, those names have been taken away for the big angle, but they are still there, oops, that's still a vertex. They are still there though, to refer to each one of these angles. So let me talk about this angle right here, angle one, okay? I can't call it angle A anymore because there's more than one angle at angle A, but I can still call this one angle one. And let's say it's 20 degrees, okay? I can say angle one is still 20 degrees, okay? The measurement of it. And I can still refer to that as angle one because that is the only angle that has the one there, okay? Uh, let's say angle two is 25 degrees, a little bit bigger, so I'd say angle two is 25 degrees, and that's still referring to this angle. And you say, well, we learned that each angle has more than one name, but we took one of the names away. I can still call angle one LAV. So LAV is also 20 degrees. That's the same angle as angle one, LAV. I could have also called it angle VAL. That's also that 20 degree angle, VAL. Okay. So VAL and LAV are still a name for this angle, but it's all referring to angle one. These are all the same angle. They're all 20 degrees. Same thing with angle two. I can call it VAX, and it's 25, and I can call it XAV, and it's 25 degrees. Okay. So angle two could also have these names, but if you notice the fourth name, 
angle A has been taken away because that does not specify which angle. Now as far as the third angle that you don't quite see is this angle when you put these two together. These two angles that are right next to each other and that share the same vertex. So the, the, the defining things of what we're going to call this is they share a vertex. Okay. They, uh, I'm going to erase this so I can have a little room here. They share a vertex. They share a side. Okay, because they share this vertex and then each one shares this side, this, this AV right here, this ray. It's the top of angle two, it's the bottom of angle one. If they share a vertex and share a side, and then there's a fancy thing that goes by, I just like to say that they're not inside of each other. Because, let me give you an example of what that looks like. Uh, let's say I have an angle here, and let's call it... Uh, C A, well, let's use C B uh, D, and then uh, angle one. Okay, let's say I talk about C B D and angle one. Angle one and C B D share vertex, and they share this side. Okay, but angle one is inside of C B D, so that's not what we're talking about. We're saying they share a vertex share a side, but they're not inside of each other. They're called adjacent. Adjacent. Okay, and that term we think of, like you, you've probably heard it outside of math, where you say someone lives adjacent to me. Uh, you know, the apartment adjacent to me. Now we've kind of loosely outside of math can mean that that could be close by, like uh, maybe two doors down or uh, uh, down the street a little bit. They live adjacent to me. Really in math, for this perp, it means right next to. They have to share a side or like an apartment wall, okay? And so one and two are adjacent to each other. Angle one and angle two are adjacent. They share a vertex and they share this side. Uh, CBD, which is this big angle here, and angle one, angle one is inside of CBD. So they're not adjacent, okay? But this, these two are adjacent. Well, because they're adjacent and because I've got these outside walls here and they share an inside wall, I can combine them so I can make angle one and two together for a 45 degree angle. Okay, that's the 20 and the 25. And that angle is this angle. I didn't erase any of the outside walls. But all I did was, just so you could see it, I took out that middle part and I combined them. It's like I tore down the wall and made it one big apartment. So this angle, this third angle that we did not see, we, you know, we had one and two, and we named them all the different ways. But the third angle that we have not named yet is LAX. Huh, like the airport, LAX. Okay, that could be called LAX. Also, you could call it XAL. You could go the other way, XAL. So let me go back to the way it originally looked. And we can, we can say the, the three angles that we saw there, okay? Uh, I think this was a V. I hope it was. I can't quite remember. I think it was a V. But we had this, okay, and this was 25 degrees, and this was 20. Okay, so I have angle 1, which I could have called, um, called it uh, LAV, or I could have called it angle VAL. Okay, and then I had angle two, or I could have called that VAX or XAV. Okay, so I could have called, so that's one angle, two angles, they've got each got several names, or that third angle is angle LAX, or I could call it angle XAL. Okay, so there's three angles and they have multiple names apiece. But that's the three angles, one, two, and then both one and two combine to form LAX, okay? So that's one thing you can do. Uh, you can add, so sometimes if you've got an angle here that's like this, 
and let's say this is, um, let me put this up here. Okay. Okay, so what you can do is here's this first angle, it's 80 degrees. Here's the second angle, it's 40 degrees. They don't have numbers like angle one, angle two, uh, but you could call this one YMS, and you could call this one SNJ, and so they, they each are their own angle. But if I want to know what the degree measure of YMJ is, because they're adjacent and because they're together, I can combine them and add the two measurements, and that YMJ is 120 degrees. It's 80 plus 40, which is 120 degrees. So this big angle is 120 degrees. So if I was to take this wall out and just say, well, what's this big angle right here? You combine these, and it's 120, okay? So that's, that's kind of what it's talking about adjacent. I wanted to cover that so that you could see what happens when there's more than one angle at a vertex. Okay, and you're going to see that. You're going to even see as we go on three or four angles at a vertex. Um, and so I wanted to prepare you for that. The last thing I want to show you is right acute and obtuse angles. So a right angle is, you've probably seen this before, because you maybe have heard a truck makes a 90 degree turn or something like that. A right angle is like you're going and you turn directly like this, or you're going this way and you turn directly like this. It is 90 degrees. Okay, and it's called a right angle. Okay, so this is a right angle. Now, what you're going to see in math and geometry is the way that they'll refer to this is they'll put a little box right here. And so you won't ever probably see, sometimes you may see 90 degrees right in there, but most likely you'll see that little box. When you see that box, that means it's a 90 degree angle. Okay, uh, if it's smaller than 90 degrees, so anywhere from 89.9 degrees, which we're not going to deal with decimal degrees really, but you know, it could go to 89.9999, but let's say 89 degrees to one degree, that is called an acute angle. So anything less than 90, it's got to be bigger than zero though to be an angle, but anything less than 90 all the way down to one or you know, 0 0.01 or something, but anything bigger than zero but less than 90 is an acute angle, okay? And then anything bigger than 90, bigger than 90, okay, I think, was I saying bigger here? Who knows now, it's late. This is smaller than 90. I think maybe I was saying bigger. I was getting ahead of myself. But this is, sorry, this is smaller than 90 degrees is an acute, okay? Bigger than 90 Need a little edit button on there if I said that. Bigger than 90 is obtuse. Okay, so from 90.1, but in our case, we're not going to use decimals, so 91 all the way to 180. Now, once it hits 180, remember, once it hits 180, it's a straight angle. Okay, so uh, for it to be an obtuse, it's going to go from 91 to 179. That is going to be an obtuse angle. So if it's sitting here at 90, it's right. If it goes in, it's going to be acute. If it goes out, it's going to be obtuse. Okay, so that's going to be some, some uh, words that you're going to see, right angle, acute, and obtuse, all right? So uh, that's going to be as far as that uh, in your notes that you're going to see. Now, uh, make sure you just take a photo of your notes of this and upload it to the assignment for today, April 6th, to get your uh, points for today and, to, and mainly, too, for your attendance. Tomorrow, April 7th, on Tuesday, you're going to have a photo of your study guide. Make sure you do that photo and uh, do that those problems and upload your photo for the April 7th on Tuesday assignment, okay? All right, thanks guys.